Hello class and welcome to today's algebra lesson which is about substitution. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to substitute to find the solution to a system of equations. So substitution is one of the two methods that we are going to use to solve system of equations algebraically. So in our last lesson we discussed graphing to solve. Now we're going to do a couple of different algebraic methods to solve. The solution is still an ordered pair. So you're still going to have your answer written in an X comma Y format, but now we're going to solve it algebraically by replacing one of the variables X or Y with an expression containing the other variable. The goal is so that there is only one variable in the equation that you are going to be solving. So for example, we're going to start with a very simple substitution problem where they actually give you one of the answers just to show you how this works. So you have an e equation saying 2x minus 5y is equal to 8. Substitution says that if you are given something that a variable is equal to, so in this case they tell you that x is equal to 8, you can substitute it in the place of x. So you can say 2 times 8 minus 5y is equal to 11. And then you would continue to solve your problem. So 2 times 8 is 16 minus 5y equals 11. Then I need to eliminate that 16. So I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides of my equation. That's going to give me negative 5y is equal to negative 5. And then in order to finish solving for y, I'm going to divide by negative 5 on both sides, giving me that y is equal to 1. So my answer to this problem would be 8 for x and 1 for y, giving us an ordered pair solution. Go ahead and try this one on your own. This time you are plugging 8 into the spot of y. Solving and working our way back, we find that x is equal to 25. So your answer is 25, 8. Not all problems are going to just be replacing the variable with a single number. Most of the time, you're going to be replacing the variable with an expression. So for example, this one says y equals 4x minus 6. And your second equation says 5x plus 3y is equal to negative 1. It tells you that y is equal to something. So you're going to come into this second equation and in the spot of y, you're going to plug this full expression. So the 5x doesn't change. That's going to stay put. Then we have plus. The 3 stays put. 3 now needs to be multiplied with y. y is going to be replaced with this other expression. 4x minus 6. Close that parenthesis and then it equals negative 1. So we replaced the letter y so that both variables in our equation now are x. We can now solve for a single variable. In order to do that, I'm going to have to get rid of my parentheses first using the distributive property. So I have 5x plus 12x minus 18 is equal to negative 1. Then I'm going to combine my like terms. 5x plus 12x is going to give you 17x minus 18 is equal to negative 1. Then I need to get rid of subtracting 18. So I'm going to add 18 to both sides of my equation. And that gives me 17x is equal to 17. And I'm going to solve by dividing by 17 on both sides to give me that x is equal to 1. So at this point, I've solved part of my problem. I know what the x coordinate is. I now am going to plug that back in to either equation. I'm going to choose the first one to solve for the second variable. So now I'm going to say y is equal to 4 times 1 minus 6. 4 times 1 is 4, subtracting 6, giving me y is equal to negative 2. So my final answer, the place where these two lines would intersect on the graph, occurs at 1, negative 2. So if you put them on the graph, this would be their point of intersection. Substitution is a way that we can solve that algebraically. Go ahead and try this one on your own. 
Once again, you're substituting in for the variable y, distributing, combining your like terms, subtracting and dividing to get you an answer of two for your x. You plug that back in and simplify to get 13 is y, giving you a final answer of 213 as the point of intersection. Sometimes our variable is not by itself to start. So I've got 4x plus 5y is equal to 11, and y minus 3x is equal to negative 13. So I want to try and get the simplest variable by itself. In this case, that's going to be the y. So I can get y by itself by adding 3x to both sides of that second equation and getting y is equal to 3x minus 13. Now that I have y by itself, I can take that and plug it in to the place of y in the other expression. So I'm going to say 4x, that's not getting substituted, plus 5, that coefficient doesn't go away. And then in the spot of y, I'm going to put 3x minus 13, and that's going to still equal 11. Now I need to distribute to get rid of those parentheses. So I've got 4x plus 15x minus, uh, and then we do 5 times 13, which is going to give me 65 is equal to 11. Then I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. So I've got 4x plus 15x, which is 19x minus 65 is equal to 11. Then I'm going to add 11, or excuse me, add 65 to both sides of my equation, giving me 19x is equal to 76. And when you divide both sides by 19, you are going to get an answer for x of 4. So x in this problem is going to equal 4. Now I need to plug this back in. I need to plug it into one of the two original equations. So I want to go either into 4x plus 5y is equal to 11 or y minus 3x is equal to 13. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the first one, giving me 4 times 4 plus 5y is equal to 11. 4 times 4 is going to give me 16 plus 5y equals 11. Subtracting 16 on both sides of my equation, I end up with 5y is equal to negative 5. And dividing by 5 on both sides, I find that y is equal to negative 1. So my final answer here is 4, negative 1. That is the place where those two lines would intersect on the graph. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Solving for x this time, that is the easiest variable to get by itself. Doing my distributive property. Solving, we find out that y is equal to 0. Plugging that back in, I get that x is equal to negative 1 for a final answer of negative 1, 0. On this one, when I substitute for my y, which is already solved, I have that 2x minus. Now, remember, if there is a variable by itself, it means there is a coefficient of 1 there. So I've got 1 and then, in, or excuse me, negative 1, and then in parentheses, 2x minus 3 equals 8. So when I distribute, we're going to distribute that negative 1, and I have 2x minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 8, distributing that negative 1 to both pieces. Now, when I combine my variables this time, I end up with 2x minus 2x, which eliminates my x's from the problem, giving me that 3 is equal to 8. We know that that is not possible. So this is one of our no solutions problem. This would result in two lines that are parallel to each other and they are never actually going to intersect. So if you have two numbers that end up being not equal, that would be our parallel lines, no solution. If it had said eight is equal to eight, 
that would be our infinite solution options where it's the same line written in two different formats. Go ahead and try this one on your own. As you solve, you plug in with substitution, you find out that negative 12 equals negative 12, giving you infinitely many solutions. Last problem, we've got a word problem. A store sold a total of 125 car stereo systems and speakers in one week. The stereo system sold for $104.95 and the speakers were sold for $19, or excuse me, $18.95. The sales from the two items totaled to $6,926.75. How many of each item were sold? So when you are working on a word problem, you wanna treat each sentence like it should be creating its own equation. So this first sentence is talking about the total number of systems. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to use the two variables, X and Y, and you wanna make sure you know which variable stands for which part of your problem. I'm gonna use X as stereos, and I'm gonna use Y as speakers. So when I'm combining those, I know that my stereos plus my speakers means that there is 125 items together. That's what my first sentence indicated to me. My second sentence, said that every time they sold a stereo, they made $104.95. So that's gonna be 104.95X. That's how we show how much money they made from their stereos. They also, so adding, made $18.95 from each speaker. So that's 1895Y. And then your total amount of money that they gave to you was six thousand nine hundred and twenty six dollars and seventy five cents so that's how you can break down the equations or excuse me the sentences to get your equations go ahead and try solving the rest of this problem on your own so in order to solve this problem you need to isolate one of the variables i chose to isolate y plug that in go through and solve that gave me x is equal to 53 then I plugged X back into the first equation and found that Y is equal to 72, meaning they sold 53 stereos and 72 speakers. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please feel free to reach out and let me know.